are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more. No I'm excited to tell you about this. This may surprise you. I never really talked about what I'm about to share with you. When I was, my first job out of college was selling radio advertising. I sold radio advertising for Z96, Columbia's number one hit kicker in Columbia, South Carolina. I also sold radio advertising for WBT in Charlotte, WBCY in Charlotte. I managed a couple of small radio stations. And when you are in sales, one of the things you need is to keep yourself upbeat and motivated because people, more people will tell you no by far than will ever tell you yes. And when you get enough no's, it's easy to start internalizing that. So I began to listen to motivational speakers like Earl Nightingale, like Les Brown, like Brian Tracy and Wayne Dyer, and et cetera. And I, I listened to these people. And when I heard one of their quotes that I just found really powerful, I'd write it down on an index card and I'd put it on a, a bulletin board for me to look at. And I, my cubicle at work was just covered with all these little quotations and everything. And one day I was at my mom's house, I think, and somebody had given her something from a church auction or a church, uh, what do you call it? Uh, bazaar that they had bought at church, like a flea market. And what it was, was a bunch of quotes, uh, not quotes. Yeah. Bible quotes. These were quotes from the Bible and they were inside of a little jar and they were all folded up. And the idea is you reach in and you pull one out. And I thought that would be so fun to do with my quotations. And so I began to collect and to collect and to collect quotations, the best quotations. I read quotation books. I read just flat out books and you know me. And when I read, I always read with a highlighter. And at that time I had just a very large library of book books and I went back and I checked all of the things that I had highlighted and I just kept pulling out these quotes and I pulled out 365 quotations that I really, really liked. And then <laughs> if the people were still alive, I wrote them all asking for permission to use their quotations. That's where I got my letter. I have a letter from Earl Nightingale that's on my wall over there. It's almost faded from time. It's over 30, 35 years old. So I wrote all of these people and I asked them if I could use their quotation. I wanted to put, so I had these sheets of paper printed up with the quotations lined up and we manually, my, my first wife and I manually uh, put all these together so that they were collated, cut it, cut them and manually folded them while we were watching television. Now, then we were trying to figure out what were we going to put them in? Now, this is a funny story I'm about to tell you where, what were we going to put them in? And we were in Nordstrom and over by the customer service department. This is in Seattle, Washington. We were at the downtown Nordstrom. We were up on the second or third floor. And we noticed these little, what looked like crystal apples that were marked, I don't know, 90% off, something like that. These little crystal apples being sold in Nordstrom. And uh, Lisa, my wife said, you know, Will, that would make a great container for your little quotations. And I thought, that is a great idea. So we, we got the, these little crystal apples or, or they look like crystal. They're actually plastic. And we took them home, folded up the quotes, put them in them, and we handed them out to people. And people really liked them. The idea is you draw one of these little folded quotations. So the slogan that I came up with, the wisdom of the ages, the fun of a fortune cookie, because you never know what you're going to get. And I, I, I just love that idea. So I think I made we made 20 or 30 of these and the labor was so incredible to fold up each one of these little pieces of paper, 365. Think about that. And we also wanted to mix and match the colors. It was just, it was huge. And so a friend of mine had a sister who was a buyer for Nordstrom and she 
met us for dinner one night and I started telling her about it. And I asked, actually, I remember now I asked him, Brian, I said, could you, could you get me a chance to talk to your sister, Linda? And he did. And I went in and met with her and I showed it to her and I said, do you think this would have any commercial value? She said, I don't know. I'll take 700. Now, do you get the irony of this? I bought the little plastic apple from Nordstrom, took it home, put my quotations in it, turned it back. And now Nordstrom wanted to buy it. And they wanted 700 within, I think, five or six weeks. Now, there was no way we could have done it. And this was before the internet. I used what's called a Thomas's guide. They still have those. I'm sure they're digitized at the library. If you need anything, you need somebody who makes pencil lead. You can find it in the Thomas guide. And the Thomas guide is, it's as big as an encyclopedia. You've got a uh, book that helps you find the codes. It, it was amazing amount of work. And I found this insane. And I, I say that in a good way printer down in Lacey, Washington, who was willing to try and figure out how to retool a pharmaceutical um, paper cutter. Back then when you got uh, drugs, and I forgot this, there would be something folded up inside the bottle or something like that with instructions. The instructions were often inside. Anyway, it was called a pharmaceutical shredder, not shredder, but paper cutter. And we did it. We made 700 of these things and we shot and made these beautiful gift boxes that they went in. And here is one of them. And this is 30 plus years later. This would have been 34 years ago. Not only did I buy this piece of plasticky thing, the apple, let's see if I can get it in front of the camera. There we go. All right. It's it looks like crystal. It's called crystal styrene. When I bought these, I then looked on the bottom of the box and Nordstrom had left the manufacturer's name. So I went back to the Thomas's guide, contacted Williams Industries in Indianapolis, Indiana, and they began to make these for me. Not only that, they stuffed them with quotations for me. This actually took off. It was, I think we ended up selling close to 47,000 of these over the next year or two. My biggest thrill was when you got on a plane and you opened up the Sky Mall magazine in the very center was my apple a day. And that was true for a very, very long time. Oh, here's the little insert that went inside. Uh, let's see if I can show it to you. Here we go. That says, a quotation at the right moment is like bread to the famished, the Talmud. Hired a guy to create the logo, and it was a long, strange trip. I actually hired the guy, paid him, had the boxes made, and then he didn't pay the manufacturers. So everyone who wanted to do this, everyone who's done something like this, has struggled, struggle, 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 struggle. Today, I was going to share and what we're going to do over the next several days. I've already pulled out a quotation and I'm going to talk about them and comment on them. And this is a, a really, really good, good quote. Where was the other one that I had just a moment ago? Ah, uh, yeah, I think it was a quote from Nietzsche. And the idea is once you pull the quote out, you can, you put it in your pocket. You don't put it back in there. The idea is to empty it. This was not the only gift I created. I also created a game for couples, which ended up selling about 15,000 pieces. So the point I'm trying to make is that I've always been into the personal development, life improvement thing. I really always, always have. And I'm very grateful for that. Thanks for letting me share this story today. I hope it was inspirational. I, I would love to meet. I remember going into somebody's office probably 15 years after, and they had one on their desk. That's where we ended up selling so many was corporations would hi buy them and they would put their logo on them. We actually had an Apple computer buy a whole bunch. No big surprise there. Mary Kay Cosmetics bought 5,000. I remember that. So this is Apple a day, it's called. It's not available anywhere else, any, anymore, and I don't plan to make it available. However, I wanted to share that story with you. And tomorrow we're going to talk about Nietzsche's quote, which is, I pulled it out of the apple, he who has a why to live for can bear almost any how. 
We'll talk about that tomorrow. Let's check in. And since I said, let's check in, it's your opportunity to click the share button and expand our community here. Jennifer says, good morning. We talked about that dishwasher. Sorry about that. I must have gotten back going backwards here. Let's see. Sometimes the tricksters win. Oh, they win a lot, David. They win a lot. I've been taken to the cleaners a few times. Oftentimes the email address has a clue like 30 or 40 characters with characters mixed in that say Amazon would never do. David, that's a good point. That was one of the first things I checked. However, it looked legit enough, but you're right. They will, I didn't check it enough. Dominic says, never call the customer service that is in the email. Look it up. Well, once I finally did that, called Amazon. They said, no one has applied for a line of credit. No one has done this. You're fine. Has Check your bank account. Anybody take anything? No. Uh, Denise says, I'll, also, always check the email address where the email originates and never call from a number in the email. Always call the organization directly. Number of the main website. Never follow links in the emails. Always go to the organization site directly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great story, says Kathy. And uh, Jennifer says, I'd buy one. On it. Awesome. You know, it's funny. I think I still have probably eight to 10 of these left. And that's it. I also created a, a game for couples uh, called Romantic Cards. I'll show you those. I think I have probably four or five of those left. That's a great story. Love it. Says Liz. Good to hear that. Cool story about the Apple Will. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, y'all didn't know that about me, did you? That was actually something I did when I was in my 20s. Uh, Therese, uh, thank you. I just bought something similar for a company called Kind Notes. They have themed messages. There you go. Uh, that's a great quote. Thank you. Yes. And, uh, it's interesting because my apple a day just exploded. It just became, it was, uh, the biggest selling item in Nordstrom's gift to go department. Isn't it funny? I bought the apples from Nordstrom, put quotes in them, turned around, marked them up big time and sold them back to Nordstrom. And I ended up, uh, it was the number one selling item in the Christmas gift to go department in the entire Northwest. And in fact, it did so well that I got to fly in the Nordstrom family Learjet. This is one of my big moments. I got to fly. I'm 28 years old, flying from Seattle to Nome, Alaska to promote, to do an in-store autograph. I autographed the boxes of these things and uh, it, it was great. It was so cool. What a great time in my life. Written on a bathroom stall. God is dead. Nietzsche scratched out and written below. Nietzsche is dead. God. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Barb J says, your energy, creativity, and care for the best attitude. Thanks so much. Great advice. Always an audience for that, says David. Thanks so much. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for being here tomorrow and for the next several days. We're going to actually pull some quotations, and I'm going to share with you thoughts on them. Your ideas are great. We need positive messages. I'm going to go ahead right now, and I've been dancing around this, and I've got absolute commitment, and we are halfway there. I am getting ready to host a summit, a summit of some of the biggest thought leaders in the world right now on a variety of subjects. I'm going to be interviewing some of the biggest names in the world, and it's going to be a two-day online summit. So get ready. It's coming. And I am super excited for this opportunity and the opportunity to share it with you. So look forward to that. More to come. Wherever you are, thanks for your comments. Thank you for sharing. And thank you very much for making a positive difference in our world. Once again, our song of the day is Hope by Shaggy. Soon as we're done, everybody, we're all going to share this vibrational moment of listening to Hope by Shaggy. Enjoy today, everybody. Alexa, play Hope by Shaggy. Here's Hope by Shaggy, featuring Prince Midas on Amazon Music. Enjoy today. Bye-bye. No more, no more complaining people, their lives. I change it with high high creating a complaint free world no more no more complaining people their lives I change